Hey everybody, it's gonna be take two. I uh, I was um recording for a long time and then my uh, computer mouse was doing something weird. So, um, Lord, please uh, guide my um, computer that it wouldn't have any um, any problems while I'm doing this recording in the name of Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. So you guys, I've, um, I wanted to talk about the, our father and, um, and this, it, the, the, the beginning of this video, I'm going to talk about the, our father and how this was, um, you know, how it says right here it says this then is how you should pray now that doesn't mean that we can't that we can't or shouldn't say the our father word for word okay but this is i think the way that our lord intended it was to be an outline of how we should pray to the how, how we should pray to the father hence why he said this is how you should pray right because our prayers you guys should flow we should mean what we're praying we should actually mean what we're praying and our prayers should flow from our heart you guys when we pray or do things um that flow from the heart that what makes it, that's what makes it so powerful that's what makes it so like that organic form of prayer that is that is that how we're expressing actually how we truly feel that is so powerful and that is um another uh one of the amazing things about free will you guys you know that we have chosen to follow god um out of the free will to love him out of the free will it's it's so organic and it's so pure and it's so powerful and um the lord um intended this to be more of a um an outline of how we should pray now you guys so many people um so many people you know when they're doing prayers you know, um, they pray for the things that they feel and believe in their heart and in their mind that uh, certain things that they should pray for, certain things that should happen. And you guys, I am not, and by no me means when I do this video, am I saying that you shouldn't pray for the things that are on your heart and in your mind. But what I'm saying is that always pray, you guys, that the Lord's will would be done above all things that you pray. Okay? You guys, when, as he is our father, okay, he knows what is best for us. And if you really, truly trust, if you really love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and you really, truly trust him, then you will, you, you will trust that the Lord's will is, is what he, that you will desire what his will is in all situations, not what your will is. See the Lord Jesus Christ, he could have gotten out of um he could have gotten out of that situation um before his crucifixion and death and during his crucifixion and death just like that. But he did what the will what the the will of the Lord, what the will of the Father is. He did his will. So um you guys if you could um uh, we're going to go over this prayer. And you guys, my next video that I'm going to do, um, I just wanted to give you, uh, say something, you guys, before I start this. You guys, what we should be doing with with our own relationship with the Lord and helping our own, our other brothers and sisters and all of us as a family is we should be seeking the Lord with all of our heart, mind, and strength and drawing closer to Him, right? and building help build one another up and uh my next video that i'm gonna do you guys is not 
isn't going to help um, people grow necessarily. What we need to do is grow in our relationship with the Lord and grow in, in, our, in, in our spirit and draw closer to the Lord and help build one another up, help our other brothers and sisters get there as well. Um, but the next video I'm going to do is not going to help people really grow necessarily, but because of how close we are to, um, to the beginning of Jacob's trouble beginning, you guys, it's very necessary that we talk about it. We don't, just because it might not be fun to talk about it or fun to think about, doesn't mean that we pretend that it's not there. Um, because we have to prepare ourselves for when these things happen, when they, when these things are about to begin, that we are prepared mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, to be able to endure these things. And in order to endure these things, we have to grow in the spirit and we have to petition the Lord for the things that we need. And again, praying that his will be done. Okay. So, um, so you guys here in this, our father, okay. Jesus says, then this is how you should pray. This is how you should pray. Okay. So <clears throat> it says, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So here, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's addressing our father, right? And, and um, I'm going to do after we read all this and go over these things that Jesus says, I'm going to read how I, I'm going to um, do the way that I say that our father and ask that you guys come into agreement with me um, and, and share with you what flows from me. Okay. Um, but, you know, you guys, we enter into um, those of us who are, who are, truly saved we can enter into the presence of the throne we can go before the throne in our spirit right and um and when we enter into the presence of the lord we should address him for who and what he is right so when i say i'll enter into the presence of the lord and i say thank you, abba thank you for everything that you've done everything that you do and everything that you continue to do Blessed be the name of the Lord God of hosts who lives from everlasting to everlasting. For light and truth and love dwell with you, Lord. For you are the one who spread out the earth and the heavens. You are the one whom by understanding made all things. You are the one who fathoms the great depths and sits enthroned on the cherubs while they say unceasingly to you, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. So you, uh, we should address the Lord for who and what he is and bless and extol his name. And you guys, when you pray, this is something really important to understand too. When you pray, you guys, part of one of the most powerful things that makes you, um, makes God's creation such pow so powerful is that they're created in his image and likeness. And God spoke the world into existence, right? He spoke it into existence. And you have this, that same power and ability, you guys, because you're made in God's image and likeness. So when you pray, so when you speak something, you actually manifest it. So when you, when you say um, something like, blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty, what you're doing is you're creating a spirit of thanksgiving and praises, okay? But when you speak curses, when you speak evil things, when you give glory to evil things, that manifests evil things, right? And part of being um, a part of the promise, you guys, right? The, the, what is the sign of the covenant, the sign of the promise to, to, our, to our, our people is the, the sign of the rainbow, right? And so, um, you know, those, you guys, those colors in the rainbow are barriers of protection in our physical realm. Those are things that keep, uh, keep God's people protected, those spectrums of light, right? And what these chemtrails and everything are doing, I know I'm getting off topic, but the, what these chemtrails and all these things are doing in the world and, and all these evil things that the evil ones are doing is it's trying to break down those barriers so that protection isn't there. So when people have done glorified and done evil in the past, what is held back 
those things from being able to manifest is um, what has held that back is God's protection barriers, those, those spectrums of the rainbow, right? And so um, you guys, uh, when you pray, when you say something, when you speak something, you manifest it. See, and in the thousand year reign, we are going to give God glory and bless and extol his name for a thousand years, you guys. And it's going to create a spirit of thanksgiving and praise and going to give the Lord glory, right? And that's what you should do as a child. When, when you are, uh, the, the word Judah, you guys, means, see, w- what we are having now, what we're seeing in, in the group, in the christian truth or community is different groups of believers there's ephraim and then there's um there's judah judah means praise right and so the people who are relate um who are um who are in the tribe of judah they love to give praise and thanks to the lord and that's we should all do that you guys no matter what is really truly inside of you that or what tribe you you are in right and yes you guys even if you um are in america and and you're not a blood uh descendant from the the 12 tribes you are a jew you are jew because the spirit inside of you convert changes who you who you are born who who your parents and your mom and your dad um you know what they passed off onto you that spirit inside of you transforms you and by your actions through the things you do in your life the things you say the things you do the see, the things you believe determines and shows and is evidence to who you are spiritually which translates into which makes you who you are in the physical as well so so uh, we address the Lord, you know, we address our Abba for who he is. And, and we say, how, we say, holy would be like uh, when you're praying, you say, Lord, may your name be held holy. May your name be held holy and glorified and blessed and extolled even above the highest heavens forever and ever. You are praying that the name of the Lord would be held holy and blessed. Because you guys, here's the thing. Satan tries to exalt. He wants to be glorified above God. So what he has been trying to do, right, is through these evil people doing evil concerts, these stars, right, getting people to come together in big concerts. And, and what, they try, what they're doing is Satan has uh, empowered them and given them the ability to be stars and have all this money in big concerts because he wants to be glorified um, above God. That's what he's been trying to do. That's what all these evil concerts with all these people like Belly, uh, uh, Alish, uh, I forgot her name, Billy something. And what they're doing is they're giving glory to the God of this world. And, they're, what, and, and Satan wants him to get so much glory so that it puts him above, it puts him above God. Because you can... Um, you can actually, you know, minister unto the Lord and bless and extol his name so that he gets glory because you're made in God's image and likeness. So you can create things as well. Right. But so we all know Satan is not going to do that, even though he's uh, has tried to and is trying to. Um, it's not going to happen. So you say, holy, you say, Lord, may your name be held holy, blessed and extolled and glorified above even the highest heavens. If you say, you guys, there's different levels of heavens. And if you pray that the name of the Lord be blessed and glorified and magnified and extolled even above the highest heavens, Satan can't go beyond that. So pray these things, you guys. So then it says, your kingdom come, your will be done. Okay. So here, you know, you guys, um, you're praying that, Lord, may, may the kingdom of the Lord God Almighty, the kingdom, be made manifest, okay? Because what happens, you guys, is the kingdom is inside of each believer. So what you're saying in this is you're praying, Lord, may your kingdom it grow stronger. May it be made manifest, right? You're saying that may the kingdom grow stronger in us, right? This is the will of the Lord. Okay, your kingdom come, your will be done. The kingdom is inside of us, 
So you're praying that this kingdom would be made manifest and grow more and more and more. You guys, that rock, that rock in, in the book of Daniel, in that statue of Nebuchadnezzar, in the rock that gets thrown at it and it shatters the statue, that's a, that is a one rock and it breaks the statue and it grows more and more and more until it grows throughout all the earth right? That's the kingdom coming. The kingdom's inside of each and every one of his children. It's in me and it's in all my brothers and sisters. And as it grows more and more in us, we bring the kingdom. The kingdom is made manifest on earth, right? As it is in heaven. So you're saying, Lord, may your kingdom be made manifest because his kingdom is manifest in the heavens. And um, you guys, um, you'll notice that it's it's part um you guys when when there's certain things in heaven god will have people make a copy of it on earth okay this is where satan gets his as above so below these are divine laws you guys okay um so like for instance how god was um telling the people to make the ark the ark of the covenant right that was a reflection and an image of what was going on that what had what is in the heavens and making an image a reflection of that on earth because that's very powerful and that gives god glory right we want to be in sync on earth we want to be in sync with what's going on up in the heavens hallelujah and then he says give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts so you're asking the lord right the name of the, the provider, the name of the Lord, our provider is Jehovah Jireh. So you're saying, Lord, give us everything that we need. Lord, we pray you to give us all the physical, spiritual, mental, emotional blessings, graces, and gifts that we need to enter into our fullness, right? And forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. Now, you guys, um, in 1 John chapter 16, it says, Indeed, from his fullness have or uh, we have all of us received grace in exchange for grace now in your kjv it says grace upon grace but when you know what that upon means you guys it's it's um you will be forgiven you will be forgiven if you have forgiven others this is what shows and proves in your life if you um are are a child of god right because only uh, if, if you don't forgive all the people, even if they have done evil and wicked things to you, you guys, if you do not forgive, you will not be forgiven for the wrong that was done. Because by, by how you measure other people is how you are going to be measured. Okay, you, that's why there's a divine law. You reap what you have sown. Okay, so if you have sown forgiveness, you will receive forgiveness for all the wrong that you have done. Okay, you are not going to get forgiven, you guys, unless you forgive others. Forgive others, you guys, so that you can be forgiven. And this, what sh this is what shows that that is proof and testimony to you being a child of God. Okay, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one right deliver us not into temptation because you guys there's the hour of temptation and the hour of trial which will come about the whole earth is going to be um is is going to um happen soon you guys the hour of temptation and the hour of trial so when you pray to the lord right lord lord holds me from the hour of temptation and the hour of trial which will come about the whole earth what happens is certain things happen throughout your day and throughout your life that prepare you to be able to um to be to qualify to be held from the that hour of temptation and the hour of trial but if you don't handle your life if you don't live your life the way that jesus commanded us to then you are going to go through the hour of temptation and the hour of trial and you don't want to do that so you guys let's pray in agreement together you guys let's pray together um this our father let's pray in agreement together in the name of our lord jesus christ yeshua okay brothers and sisters so i um i pray 
I pray you, all right, I ask you to please come into agreement with me in the name of Jesus Christ, either in your heart or by your words. Please come into agreement with me, brothers and sisters, and let us pray this, our Father, together. So, in agreement with all of my brothers and sisters. Lord, in agreement with all my brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, we enter into your presence, Lord, with praises and thanksgivings. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done, everything that you do, and everything that you continue to do. Lord, in agreement with all my brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the merits and power of the cross, blood, passion, death, and glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that defeated Satan and paid a ransom for our sins, we bless and praise and extol your holy name, Lord. Lord, we pray in agreement with my brothers and sisters and by the merits and pa of the passion, cross, blood, death, and glorious resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach that defeated Satan and paid a ransom for our sins. Lord, we pray that your name would be blessed and held holy and extolled and glorified above even the highest heavens forever and ever and ever. Lord, we pray in agreement with all my brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that your kingdom be made a manifest that your kingdom be made manifest in all your children, Lord. Send forth your spirit, Lord. And we pray that your kingdom be made manifest and that your, your sons and daughters would blossom and bloom into the men and women of God that you have called us to be in the name of Yeshua, by the power of the blood of Yeshua, by the power of the Holy Spirit. But Lord, in all these things we pray, we pray that your will be done. Whatever your will is, Lord, whatever your, your intentions, whatever your desires for me and all my brothers and sisters in agreement with me and all of our brothers and sisters throughout the whole world, we pray that your will, your desires, your intentions be made manifest at this very moment in the name of Yeshua. And, and may your will and desires and intentions be made manifest in us and all of our brothers and sisters and throughout the whole world as it is in the heavens. And Lord, we pray. We pray you, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, please provide me and all my brothers and sisters and all of our brothers and sisters throughout the whole world with everything that we need, all the physical, spiritual, mental, emotional blessings, graces, and gifts that we need to blossom and bloom into the men and women of God that you have called us to be. And Lord, we pray you in agreement with all my brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, we, we confess and repent of all of our sins. Lord, we pray that you would forgive all of my sins, all of my brothers and sisters who are in agreement with me sins, all of our brothers and sisters throughout the whole world sins. Please forgive us our sins, Lord. And as we have also forgiven all of the wrong that was done to us, Lord, may the merits of the sorrowful passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood atone for all of the sins that me and all my brothers and sisters throughout the whole world have have committed from the moment of our conception up until now, whether they be sins in our thoughts, our words, our actions, and what we have done and what we have failed to do, and all known and unknown sins. May the merits of the sorrowful passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and, and the power of his precious blood that defeated Satan and paid a ransom for our sins ransom us out from every power of sin and death and atone for all of our sins that we have ever committed. And Lord, we pray you, Lord, hold us from the hour of temptation and the hour of trial which will come about the whole earth. Whatever has to happen, Lord, whatever has to be made manifest, whatever has to happen in us to prepare us or to, be that, or to qualify us to be held from the hour of temptation and the hour of trial, the hour of the evil one which is coming about the whole earth, Lord, may it, may it be done in the name of Yeshua in agreement with all my brothers and sisters and by the power of the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach that defeated Satan and paid a ransom for our sins. And Lord, we love you, we praise you, we adore you, we glorify you, we bless and extol your holy name forever and ever and ever. Increase our love, Lord. Increase our love for you. Increase our love for our brothers and sisters and for all people. And Lord, bestow upon us and all of our brothers and sisters throughout the whole world the spirit of perseverance, endurance, patience, and long-suffering. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and hallelujah. Wow, that was awesome. That was awesome, brothers and sisters. So, yeah, you guys, that, you know, always pray and everything that you pray, you guys, and I'm not, I'm not saying to not pray for the things that are on your heart. I'm not saying that you guys pray for the things, pray fervently, pray unceasingly, pray for the things on your heart. 
but always pray, you guys. Always trust in the Lord as an Abba. You guys, when you have children, I, I know some of you, a lot of you have children. You guys, when you see them, you know your children. They're from you. You know when they are about to come up to you and ask you for something. You know what they need. You know what is best for them. You guys, all of these things that are in the world, how they are with these things with our children and our relationship with them, that is God talking to us of how these things are in, in the heavenly realms and how our relationship should be with the Lord. All these things of how family works, how it operates the things that happen inside of a family, those are a reflection of how these things are and should be between our relationship with the Lord. The Lord speaks to us, you guys, all the time. It's just, do we have the eyes to see? Now, Lord, um, you guys, it says, um, where is it? It says, in Revelation, it says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. You guys know. You guys, what that is taught, the Lord in the end days, he pours out his spirit upon all flesh, not just some flesh, all flesh. And you guys, the door, the, uh, the door um, inside of you, you have doors, you have gates, okay, inside of your mind, inside of your being. And what the Lord is doing as he's poured out his spirit on all flesh is he's knocking at that door. And the way that he is knocking, he is knocking through the convictions that you get. He is knocking at the messages, the things that he's speaking to your heart. And if you, it, look, you guys, Alice says, therefore be earnest and repent. You guys, through these convictions, through these things that he's saying to you, he is, he's, that is the Lord knocking at the door in your heart and in your mind in the hopes and in the prayer that you would turn away from the things, you, you know, the convictions are happening, you guys. And, but if you don't acknowledge them and turn away from them, he wants to come inside of your mind and your heart, you guys, and take up and sit. He wants to establish and sit on the throne in your heart and in your mind. So when he's saying, behold, I knock, it's his spirit that is knocking inside of your mind and your heart. And he's telling you, he's showing you the things to repent from. He's showing you the things that you need to change so that in order he can come in and be and, and take up residence inside of you. But if you do not do the things that you need to do, if you don't answer, if you don't, if you, if you, um, reject the convictions if if you don't repent then he can't come inside of you and and he's not gonna he can't come inside of you and take up residence and dwell inside of you and this is why most of our brothers and sisters are going to go through the um tribulation because that is how they're going to be purified and purged purged because they didn't pick up their cross and follow him so you guys, the Lord is knocking and the age of grace is about to end, you guys. You guys, the beast system is about to be, um, is about to start happening. Everything is going to change, you guys. As soon as the 42 month reign of the beast begins, everything is going to change. And unless you are in, unless you are in that covenant with the Lord and protected with those holy, those, those, um, those, those colors of the rainbow, those barriers of protection, you guys, you are going to have to go through the hardest things that human mankind has had to go through. But it's for a reason, you guys. It's for a reason, these things. It's so that they can, they can obtain their robes. And you guys, in Deuteronomy 6, you guys, this is all about, you guys, all of these things are about going back into the promised land, you guys. You guys, our, our ancestors, our forefathers, they wandered out in the desert. They didn't enter into the promised land. There's still a promise. There's still a Sabbath day rest, as it says in Hebrews 4. That's what we are about to enter into. 
you guys, there's many misconceptions about what the rapture is and, um, and, and you guys, yes, there is going to be a rapture at the last trump where the Lord is going to pull people away before the glory of God comes through and burns up the son of perdition. Because we can't, nobody can stand that, you guys. You can't stand the glory of the Lord um, uh, going through you. We, that's why there has to be a removal. But the Lord, you see, you guys, what, what it's talking about is is when the Lord says, where I am, you may be also, is when you are conver when you are saved, you guys, you enter into heavenly places. But in the book of Revelation, as it says, when John saw the mo uh, peoples around the throne of God, that is where the Lord Jesus Christ is, the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. And that's when, when he says, I go to prepare a place for, so that where you may be, I, uh, um, where I may be, you may be also. You guys, it's it's um, it's talking. You have another part of you, a soul, and he is going to take um, the his children's souls, and he's going to they're going to be around the throne of the Lord. That is taken up. That is a catching up because when when you are seated in heavenly places, you are not necessarily in. Um, around the throne of God and to able to enter into his presence. Okay, that's for people who are safe. When it talks about entering into the, um, the throne of the Lord boldly, that is talking about your soul. Actually, when you say that, it's entering into the presence of the Lord and interceding and praying and giving him glory to serve him there day and night. But human you guys, the flesh and blood, uh, the God's children are going to inherit the earth and rule and reign as a line of kings and priests for a thousand years. Yes, their soul is going to be around the throne of God. That is a, a type of rapture. And yes, you guys, there will be another, uh, an actual um, removal of people that are going to be caught up at the last trump. That's at the last trump. You guys, in Isaiah 65, it says, For my people shall live long as trees, and my chosen ones will wear out what their hands have made. They will not toil in vain or beget children to their own ruin, for they will be a race blessed by Yahweh and their children with them. You guys, the meek will inherit the earth. Remember in the book of Daniel, it says God came down and gave judgment, had a holy uh, court session was held, and he gave the kingdom of the world off to his people. And when it says you, uh, Christ will reign and rule on earth, Christ is a spirit, you guys. Christ is the spirit of God. And yes, it is going to be in his people. It's going to be dwelling in his children on earth. But you guys, there's still a thousand year period, a thousand year rest for us. And then the Lord and Lord of King of Kings is going to come down with the heavenly Jerusalem after a thousand years in heaven and earth. The, the earth will be like the Garden of Eden again and heaven and earth will unite again. And the Lord will be with us face to face in the way that people are perceiving it to be. But that's after the thousand year reign, you guys. Listen to this. This is um, Deuteronomy chapter six, you guys. And remember, this has not been fulfilled yet, you guys. We haven't entered into our Sabbath rest. We have not entered into our promised land. That's why we're here away from our promised land. Because all of these things in the Bible um, are, are happening and have to be fulfilled. And we are the heirs to the promise. Those who are in the Lord Jesus Christ are the heirs to the promise. And it says, And these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thy heart. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. You guys, when you say words, when you do certain, when you do actions and you say words and believe, it gets, it gets inscribed on your DNA. It gets inscribed. Uh, inscribe. It gets inscribed on your being and your DNA. That's why it says that when you go into the presence of the Lord, everything is laid bare before Him. 
all the things that you've done, all the things that you said is, is, um, is, is written on your DNA. It's written on your, on your, in your being, right? The things that you say, the things that you do, the things that you've thought of is inscribed on your DNA, right? But the spirit of Christ transforms, it transforms us, you guys, right? So listen to this. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. These words are literally going to be inscribed in your heart when the Lord says, I will write on the tablets of thy heart thy, uh, my law. That's what he's going to do, you guys. It's literally going to be inscribed on the fleshly tablets of our heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. See, he's talking about his people, you guys, the Lord's people. They talk and think about these things as they're sleeping, when they're sleeping, when they wake up with their children. They think about these things as they're laying down, thinking about the Lord and everything that he is and, and making sure that we follow the Lord. You know, oh, when I was, when I did this, this today, you know, should I have handled it better? This is, uh, this is, um. These are the things that the true people of God, these are the things that they do and think and say. And maybe, maybe you're not there yet. Maybe a lot of our brothers and sisters aren't there yet, you guys. But we need to encourage them and try our best to help them get there. Because those who are not sealed with the Holy Spirit, you guys, when the day Jacob's trouble begins, you guys, they are going to go through the worst things that have ever happened, but it's for a reason, you guys, okay? And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand and shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So you guys, that by your actions, by the things you do, right? By the things that you do, the actions that you do, in your in your throughout your life that is testimony and evidence to who you are and the children of god will do the things that the lord has commanded us and frontlets between your eyes that's in your mind you guys everything is inscribed on the dna and in your being and the lord knows who's his and and people who are truly in christ who are truly God's children, think and do and act a certain way. And we need to encourage others to get there. Encourage them in love to get there, you guys. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thine house and on the gates. That's inside of your being, you guys. Because the things that you do and say are um, get written on your DNA, get written inside of your being. Now listen to this. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, to give the great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. You guys, this has not been fulfilled yet. Our ancestors roamed around in the, the promised land and they didn't enter in because of their action, because of the things they did and said, right? But we are the heirs to this promise, you guys. This is going to happen to us. Look, you guys, in Isaiah 65, and um, it says, for my people shall live as long as trees, Isaiah 65, 22. They will not build for others to live in, you know, like people do construction work. We do it for money and stuff like that. They will be erased, blessed by Yahweh and their children with them. You guys, we have a Sabbath rest to enter for a thousand years. God's people are going to inherit the earth. They are made a line of kings and priests. The blood of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice has made a line of kings and priests, given us the grace and, and, and the spirit of Christ transforms us into a reflection of, our, of who our Lord Jesus Christ is and has defeated the powers of sin and death, has defeated Satan and transforms us, transforms our heart that we would have a heart like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we could love like him. 
You guys, we are called to 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 perfect. We are called to be perfect, to walk blamelessly before the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord and everything He did for us on Calvary, it gives us all. It gives us all the blessings, graces, and gifts, and gives each person who believes and who chooses the ability and the desire, and or the ability and everything they need to walk blameless before the Lord. And if you really love Him, then this is what you will do. You won't want to hurt him. You won't want to continue smoking. You won't want to continue stop to, to do evil things that the Lord is that are not pleasing to the Lord. And houses full of all good things which thou fill it fill this not, and wells and wells digged which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You guys, this is a year of deliverance. These promises, you guys, are being made manifest and being fulfilled in God's true people. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. You shall not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are round about you. See, you guys, we have been converted. We have been um, converted. And in our process, a lot of our other brothers and sisters and people around us, they choose to worship other things right now. They choose to idolize their own thoughts, their own desires, their own doctrines themselves. But during the tribulation, you guys, during the tribulation process, you guys, they will be cleansed of all that stuff. Just as it says in um, many places in the Bible, but Daniel chapter 11, I think. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God shall be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. You guys, God's children are going to judge the angels. They're going to judge the world. A heavenly council and court is going to be held. And the Lord is going to rule in our favor. And our brothers and sisters need to, um, still need to go through things during the tribulations to help get them there, you guys. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded thee. And thou shalt do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. You guys, we are going back into that land to cast out all the enemies before thee as the Lord has spoken, right? In Jeremiah 16, 16, you guys, this is, we are going to judge the, the um, we are going to judge the evil one and the, and the men, the evil men who continue to don't want to repent. We are going to judge them and the fallen angels. You guys look. Jeremiah 16, 16. I will now send many fishermen. It is Yahweh who speaks, and these will fish them up. Next, I will send for many huntsmen, and these will hunt them out of every mountain, out of every hill, out of the holes and the rocks. Well, who goes into the whole mountains and the hills and the holes and the rocks? The elites on that great day. The elites go hiding in their bunkers and in their caves. Right? Because they are going to be brought to judgment by God's people. The rod ruled with a uh, uh, ruled with the world ruled with an iron rod, right? To cast out all thine enemies and before thee, as a, just like we have done, just like our forefathers have done in the past. And when thy son asketh thee in time, and when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, 
what mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God has commanded. Then you shall say unto my son, 